Danny Dover, faculty instructor for Simply Learn. I'm the author of the best selling book, SEO Secrets. I was the lead SEO at ATT Interactive, and I was the lead SEO at a company called SEO Moz, today called Moz. In general, I'm basically a nerd about all things digital marketing. Welcome to SEO Foundations. Let's be clear from the start. Search engine optimization is very complex. To simplify this dizzying array of concepts, we will be identifying the three major parties involved with search engine optimization and describing how these three players interact with each other based on their incentives. We will see why users are only interested in the most relevant search results and how search engines strive to provide these results. Then we will consider how search engine optimizers, those who practice SEO, work to influence search rankings. Name the three major parties involved in search engine optimization. Identify the incentives of each party involved in SEO. Explain how the incentives of various parties shape the entire search ecosystem. List the pros and cons of SEO compared to other digital marketing disciplines. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to start our exploration of SEO foundations with a very nerdy idea. The best way to understand a complex field of knowledge like SEO is to first understand the incentives of the major players. So for SEO, this turns out to be very easy. The major players of SEO are users, the humans around the world who are using search engines every day, search engines themselves, and us, the SEOs. So let's start with the most important of these. It's the users. These are made up of the hundreds of millions of people just like yourselves who use search engines like Google every day. These are people in the United States. They're people abroad. They're people using English. They're people all over the place searching with text, with images, with videos, all kinds of stuff. All of these are considered the users, and they're what drive SEO from the perspective of search engine themselves and from SEOs, the people who practice the profession. All right, let's dive into the meat of this, the search engines themselves. Search engines are technologies owned by technology companies. The most common one of this, of course, is Google. Google's a company based out of Mountain View, California. It's dominating the arena of search right now, and it has been for a while. But it's not the only player in the game. In fact, there's a lot of other important players. The other ones that are big in the United States are Yahoo, which you've probably heard of because it's been around for a long time, uh, and Bing, which is owned by Microsoft. Outside of the United States, there's some other search engines that are also very important. So first and foremost, we have Badu, which is enormous in uh, market share in China. You also have Yandex, which is gigantic in Russia, and you have Naver, which is important uh, in South Korea. In addition to that, you have very specific search engines that do one thing very, very well. So a great example of this would be Wolfram Alpha, which works on computational knowledge and uh, complex mathematics. Now, the third major player in this is my favorite. Now, I'm very biased because I am an SEO, and this is how I pay my bills. But I think this is the one that's most exciting and the one that we're going to be talking about throughout this whole course. So SEO, let's dive into that a little bit. It's an acronym, and it's actually a very confusing acronym because it means two different things. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, which is the field, and Search Engine Optimizer, which is the profession. So if you remember that part, you're good to go because that's the trickiest part of this opening, of this opening section in that you have to have one acronym that means two things. So what does an SEO do? Well, an SEO does a lot of things. And actually, as we'll talk about, it's an increasing amount of roles. But the important thing to get out of this is that an SEO focuses on influencing organic rankings in search engines. So they're not working on the paid side. They're working on everything else that search engines like Google provide. Now that we know the major players in SEO, let's look at what incentivizes them. By understanding their incentives, you're going to understand what drives the market. So the first one that we have is users. Now, this is everybody, yourself included in this. This is the world's population who's using the internet to try to find information. The incentive for the users of the internet is to find the most relevant information that they possibly can on any topic that they can at any time in any language. So it's a very, very big goal, but something that search engines uh, work towards trying to solve. So what incentivizes the search engines exactly? Well, it's two things. They're trying to provide the most relevant results to users worldwide, but they're doing that in two ways. They're doing it through organic results, uh, which they do not get paid for. They're things that they're, just, they're going to provide so that they can do a breadth of information. And there's ads, which third parties are paying for, that ha also have relevant information. So what is incentivizing the search engines? It's twofold. They're trying to attract a gigantic audience of users uh, with organic results and with the ads by providing relevant information. And it's the money that they're getting paid for with the ads. This works really, really well for SEOs. 
SEOs are focusing only on the organic side. It's a completely different profession working on the PPC side, but what's important for SEOs is to work on getting their information or more often their clients' information to the top of search engines so that their relevant information is shown to the world's audience of searchers. Now that we have the major players identified and their incentives, let's look at this weird relationship we have between them. So you understand now what's driving them, but let's look a little bit more into this. So we have the users who are just looking for relevant information, and quite frankly, they don't care where they get it from, they just want the best information that's most convenient to them, and convenient largely means free. For search engines, you have two things that they're focusing on. It's getting a worldwide audience of searchers by providing the most relevant information, and they want to provide ads so that they can get paid and be profitable. You also then have this, the SEOs who want to provide the relevant information as long as, as it is their client's information or their own information. So you have a bunch of forces that are working together. You have these search engines who need the SEOs to help organize information. You have the users who are driving the whole system. And you have these search engines who are kind of forming this core of it. Uh, but on a day-to-day -day level, you'll see that this relationship shifts a lot. People start, uh, particularly the search engines and SEOs, work together one day, and then they'll fight a little bit the next day, and then it goes on and on and on, and keeps the profession very complex, uh, but very interesting and, most importantly, profitable. Whenever you're doing a deep dive of an idea, I find it's really useful to first take a step back and figure out where it fits into everything else. So when we're looking at this, remember that SEO is just one channel of many. There's many different aspects that go into online marketing, and SEO just has its own unique pros and cons of that. So let's look at that right now. What are the pros of SEO? Why is it better than other marketing channels? Well, the first one is it tends to be less expensive than the other channels. You don't have to pay a third party over and over again necessarily like you do with PPC. You don't have to pay per uh, like sending of an email. You don't have to pay in those kinds of ways. So you do pay the salary of the SEO, or you pay the commission based off of that, but you don't have to pay some third party where that money just goes away. The second part of this is it tends to be long lasting. So work that you do on SEO at one point is going to continue to pay dividends into the future. This is very different than something like PPC, where as soon as you stop paying the bills, it immediately goes away and all the work you've done stops having an impact. SEO is not like that. It continues to go on potentially years into the future after you've done the initial work. Now, what are the cons of SEO? Well, the first one is the biggest one. It's constantly changing. SEO is all over the place. Sometimes the best practice will be true, and sometimes the best practice will not be true. Uh, and it depends on context, and it depends on the environment of what's happening in the, big the bigger ecosystem. So that is, that is a difficult part of SEO, is that it is always moving, it's constantly changing. And the last one is, especially with the head terms, and we'll go into that a little bit more, more in the future, it gets very, very competitive. Uh, if you're targeting keywords that lots of people are searching on and there's lots of demand for and lots of people trying to target the same thing, uh, you're going to run into a very, very competitive environment, more so than most of the other online marketing channels. Users, search engines, and SEOs are the major parties involved in the SEO process. Incentives of the major players. Users want the most relevant result. Search engines want to make money from advertisements. SEOs want to show their information to searchers. Each of the incentives of the major players in SEO interact with each other to create the search market. Pros of SEO. SEO is relatively inexpensive and is long lasting. Cons of SEO. SEO is constantly changing and is quite competitive.